I have been waiting a whole year to say this joke. They told me I had to wear a mask. <laughs> okay, that was, that was a long way to go for that joke. <laughs> um, actually, as a speaker, I don't have to wear a mask, so that's pretty awesome. Um, welcome, everyone, to the closing game. Sorry for that bit of, bit of silliness at the beginning, but uh, uh, we try to have a little bit of a uh, fun time at the end of the conference here. This is a tradition. If you've never been here before, I uh, hope you have a good time while you're here. Um, so let's just get right into it. Um, a little prefetching. If you're here, you're going to be playing this game with red and green cards. Uh, if you're at home, though, you will need to log in to a URL that I will show shortly. Uh, but before you do that, you need to look up your conference registration number in order to be able to play, because that's part of the registration process. So please be looking that up uh, while I talk a little bit. So uh, at the end of the conference here, we want to thank those who have uh, made it possible. Uh, of course, our sponsors. Uh, we have a lot of great sponsors this year. Uh, we won't be able to do it without them. Uh, our diamond and our platinum sponsors and gold and silver, all kinds of precious metals <laughs> and, uh, and uh, our bronze and our partners. And uh, also, I really got to give a shout out to the members of the program committee who helped uh, organize the content, select the talks that we had. I thought, um, I thought we had some great content uh, this year. And so I, I really appreciate uh, these guys and, and uh, gals and all the work that they do. Um, oh, let me see. I'm going to need my real glasses. I'll, I'll put on my shades later. but. Um, and then, of course, uh, we couldn't have this. This, this really is, a, the event is something where we just share information with each other. And so the speakers are actually kind of the stars of the program. Um, and the people who you know, work, uh, work to prepare materials and present it uh, so that we can all benefit as a community. Uh, and then the attendees, I thank you uh, all for being here. Uh, for those that could make it, uh, I know you had to uh, brave travel to get here. I apologize that we couldn't have uh, more kind of open borders and, and get some of the people from uh, Europe and Asia here, but uh, we're glad that they could join us online as well. And then I would be very, very remiss if I didn't give a shout out to the Linux Foundation event staff, who I believe are the best in the business. So let's give them a round of applause. Now, uh, if, you, uh, if you are playing at home, please go to closinggame.net and uh, start registering. So you need to register your account. Uh, there's a form that'll pop up that has your requires your confirmation number. The other three fields are completely at your discretion, uh, but you can decide an account name, a user alias, uh, and uh, also your real name and address and email address in case you win we have to communicate with you so uh, this will only be used if you win a prize our privacy policy is this file gets deleted right after the game except for the, the winners so um, and then just get your get your computer or your browser waiting on that page until we're ready to do that so just a little bit of housekeeping before we move on uh, speakers, please submit your, your PDF to the sketch.com site. Uh, use the manage session on your session page or just email them to cfp at linuxfoundation.org. Don't make us hunt you down. <laughs> Every year there's a couple of people I have to go uh, chasing down to make sure we get your, uh, your presentations. Uh, the sessions were recorded uh, and they will be put on YouTube soon and we'll make you aware of that. So there's a presentations page that's already available uh, that's been made. And some of the slides are already there, so you can go. It's a nice, handy, single page where all the slides and links are going to be. Uh, and when the videos are made available, we'll put the, the, pages, uh, the links to those videos on that page. So we appreciate the, the people who, who work on that stuff behind the, behind the scenes. So future events, we are going to do this again next year. Uh, maybe we'll do it twice. That's, the, that's uh, been our historic trend, but COVID turned everything upside down. Um, so we have Embedded Linux Conference. It will be somewhere in North America, actually the United States of America, uh, on, in June. Uh, so pencil those dates in. Uh, and then Embedded Linux Conference Europe 2021 
we're going to shoot for Dublin again. <laughs> so this is, a, this is our third try at getting to Dublin. Uh, and we'll see. Third time's a charm. Maybe it's a lucky charm. I don't know. Uh, sorry, that was bad. Uh, what? Oh, where is it? Uh, oh, 2022. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's not, it wasn't two weeks ago. Uh, <laughs> gosh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, it says, oh, yeah. I, I don't want to say I just copy and paste my slides, but, you know. Uh, <laughs> Um, so this was our first hybrid event. There were some things that went well and some things we think that could probably be improved. Uh, we had a lot of last minute changes uh, due to the resurgence of COVID. We really had high hopes that we'd be able to get more people here in person. Uh, borders have, had not opened like we'd hoped. Uh, but uh, I still hope that you had a great experience and uh, please give us feedback on, on the event. Uh, send, send an email to the Linux Foundation or even to me directly and uh, let us know what you think could be improved or, or what you liked or what you disliked. Um, so now let's just get right into it. Uh, we don't have a whole lot of time, so we're just going to start playing some games. Uh, I like Ga we used to, in the old days, we used to have these games where we'd pull some people up on stage and only they could win prizes. I don't like that. I like a, kind of a de uh, democratic thing where anyone who plays, uh, anyone in the audience can participate and play. So we have two types of games. Uh, we're going to call the first one a game of skill. <laughs> and <laughs> you'll see. And then the second one we'll call a game of luck. Uh, the basic outline is we're going to narrow, we're going to start with a big group and then narrow the contestants down and winners will be selected uh, to win a prize. So, uh, if you're, this is the first time, of course, we're doing this. This is a hybrid. We're going to try and play in person and online at the same time. Who knows if it's going to work? Uh, we'll see. Um, oh, we've already got uh, 44 people registered online, though, so that's pretty good. Uh, so, uh, if you're at home uh, you're, or you're online, uh, make sure you register. Go to that registration page. We'll answer questions and hopefully win some prizes. If you're here, let me explain how the game works. Uh, make sure you have two cards of different colors, a red card and a green card. At the beginning, we'll have everyone stand up. And then, uh, as we go through the trivia questions, you hold up a card to match what your answer is. If you're wrong, uh, we request that you sit down, <laughs> so, uh, we, and we have judges watching. Uh, uh, so eventually, the people who are remain standing uh, will win a prize, and, uh, and then we'll, we'll keep doing rounds and, until we run out of time or, or trivia. Um, the probability that this is all going to work is pretty low. <laughs> uh, so uh, on the, the virtual machine that I was running this on, uh, it, they changed the U USWGI uh, or UWSGI, whatever. The, they changed one of the demons on it, and I had to convert my script from Python 2 to Python 3. If you've ever done such a conversion, you know that, that there's going to be a Unicode in, error in here somewhere, uh, and the whole thing will fall over, and it'll be terrible. Uh, but, you know, that makes it all the more fun. Um, I made other changes to the script just this week. Uh, so, uh, and not a, not a lot of intense testing. And the server's been a bit unstable, so, so let's see what happens. Uh, what can you win? You can win a gift certificate to LWN.net. Uh, LWN.net is great. They're a great resource for the community, and if you're not a su subscriber, you, you really should be. Uh, not only do you get the early access to some of the paid articles, all the articles become free eventually, but, uh, but it it's really good to su support uh, John Corbett and, and his team of uh, editors and writers. And, and then we have a, a bunch of gift cards that we can give away. So with that, uh, our first game is going to be a trivia game. It's Embedded Linux History, Technical and Nerd Trivia. And uh, I came across an XKCD that I thought was pretty funny. Uh, and it, it kind of makes me think about what's going on here. So this is... Experts always kind of overestimate how people, how familiar people are with with their uh, with uh, their area of expertise. So uh, I don't know if you can read this, but but one uh, one geochemist is saying to the other, 
uh, silicate chemistry is second nature to us geochemists, so it's easy to forget that the average person probably only knows the formulas for olivine and one or two feldspars. <laughs> and quartz, of course. Oh, of course. <laughs> so, uh, and I kind of feel like that with these questions. I, I, for, the, for me, a lot of these questions are second nature, but then I'm, I'm kind of nerdy, and I watch the kernel traffic in the mailing list a lot, so I apologize in advance if it's, if it's uh, stuff that you're not familiar with, but it's kind of a guessing game anyway. Um, and this is important, we're talking in the hallway right before this. Everybody knows the game is not fair. So if you get, if you get booted out uh, and you think I'm wrong, uh, that is kind of too bad. <laughs> um, and if you're at, the other type of fairness that could happen, of course, besides me being wrong, uh, well, I guess this is just a different way for me being wrong. If the whole, th if the whole game just falls over and all the people at home get, get logged out, uh, that's kind of too bad too. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but if you want to follow along, the stream will be going, so even if the game falls over online, the people at home can watch the stream and see the questions and hopefully enjoy some of this. So, if you're, on, if you're at home, go to closinggame.net. We're very proud of that uh, registration that we got there. <laughs> and uh, it's RG for the red-green game. And uh, now I'm going to do this. Switch to browser for online game. <laughs> So here in the room, let's see here. Okay. So we've got 51 people playing at home. And, and we've got people here. So uh, everybody stand up. <laughs> and make sure you have your cards in your hand. And we'll, we'll see if this works. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, this is our warm-up question. The currently released version of the kernel is 5.15 RC5 or 5.14.8? Okay, so commit to your answer. Uh, we've got 18 people answered so far at home. Still waiting for those to come in. So... Oh, yeah, there's a lag in the video. La la like last year, it was like seven seconds or 10 seconds or something. It was really bad. Uh, the game is not fair. OK. Oh, we're up to, we're in the 30s. Let's see if we can break 40, and I'll go ahead and. OK. OK, and the answer is uh, release candidates are not released can kernels. <laughs> It says right in their name. So if you're, if you're green, sit down. Uh, besides, RC5 is not even the right kernel. It's, R, it's RC, is it RC4? I think it's RC3. Did it, but it's not RC5, I know that. <laughs> okay, so congratulations to the people who stayed in. Um, actually, a bunch of people just Still in. We have 36 people online still in. OK. A group of re security researchers got into trouble this past year. Uh, was it green for submitting patches with intentional security bugs, or red for publicly announcing security flaws without first notifying the kernel developers? Oh, I didn't fool anyone. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't, know if, if, I don't know if the people at home can see the audience, but uh, I'm, I'm not going to tell them what everybody's holding up. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, the answer on this one is, this was, of course, the infamous, okay, come on. This was the infamous University of Minnesota incident uh, that they, back in oh, August of 2019, 2020, somewhere in there, they, uh, they submitted some bogus, bogus patches. They said that they, were, that they took measures to try to prevent the patches from actually making into mainline, but one of them actually did. And the reason it did was because despite the fact that they thought it had a bug in it, it, it actually was a correct fix. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, but they, they said they weren't trying to harm the community, but this caused a lot of, a lot of issues. <laughs> 
And uh, they did apologize, and the, things, things got better. So, um, so let's go uh, to the next question. OK, how many embedded Linux conferences have there been? 16 or 30? This is one of those things where people kind of look around the room. <laughs> 16 or 30? Uh, Got to wait for people online. There's actually a pretty healthy delay waiting for people online. OK. Yeah, I don't know. Can they see? No, the camera zoomed on me. Oh, the camera zoomed on me. OK, that's good. I mean, it's one thing to crib off people in the room. but. <laughs> Uh, OK, the answer is 30, uh, because I was counting ELC Europe, which is an ELC. Um, so that's pretty good. Oh, Ooh, OK, we knocked out a bunch. How are we doing in the room? God, what, one, one, two, three, four, five, about eight, nine. OK, sorry, we've got to keep going. Um, OK. This would be harder if Linus hadn't said it in his keynote. <laughs> okay, so how old was Linus Torvalds when he made the first announcement of Linux? Was he 21 or 24? <laughs> 21 or 24? Uh, we got healthy number of users online. OK, he was, and he said this in his keynote, he was 21. So, oh, we're, I, I got to throw some stuff out here that fools people. OK, this is a tricky one. How many times has Linux landed on Mars? Is it once, 14 times, or more than 14? If it's more, I, I didn't explain the both thing, but it's, if you, if you think it's uh, more than 14, you hold up both cards. So how many times has Linux landed on Mars? I will, so should I give people a hint? Nah. <laughs> not, no, the game's not fair. OK, this one is both red and green. More than 14. And the reason, of course, is because the helicopter has flown 13 times. So technically, that's a landing on. <laughs> and I counted twice because there's two instances of Linux in the Perseverance rover, one for the EDL cameras and one for the base station. <laughs> so I don't, know if you, I don't know how you want to count that as a landing on Mars. <laughs> it's not fair. Uh, OK. Oh, we're down to four here. Uh, oh, we're down to four online. We'll do, I'm sorry, we're doing one more question. But this is an easy one. Come on. Uh, who wrote the book, The War of the Worlds? Was it Edgar Rice Burroughs, Jules Verne, or H.G. Wells? OK, I'm just waiting for people to answer online. I'm kind of. I always. I'm always curious how many people uh, who are virtual have the game running in one browser and like Wikipedia in another. Because <laughs> this is a pretty easy one to find the answer for. It's H. G. Wells, and it, it's pretty interesting. It was written at the end of the 19th century, which and a lot of the stuff in there is actually still makes for a pretty good movie. I mean, still Steven Spielberg made a made a movie out of it. Okay, so I believe. How are we doing? We got four and four. Uh, let's go ahead and declare winners. OK, so these are the people online that won. And you four people who are still standing have won. This is the part that we didn't practice. We don't know what exactly we're doing. <laughs> Can you? Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. Oh, Frank. Yeah, Frank, come on. I don't know. Well, he doesn't know the questions. so. So we need to get the information from you four people, just real quick. Just let us see your, uh, oh, actually, I saved this to a file, so you don't need to. So, but if, but if we can get, yeah, these two gentlemen also. All right, so eight winners. 
I run on time. Okay. Well, the good news is for everyone else is that everyone's back in the game, so you can all stand back up. Sorry, the people who won, it's, it's exhausting. <laughs> it's a hard life. Okay, next question. Which of the following companies was victorious in an important lawsuit about copyright of APIs uh, that was released this year by the US Supreme Court? Went all the way to the Supreme Court. Okay. I would ask you to not look around, but it's impossible not to look around. <laughs> okay. And the answer on this one is Google. This was, a, this was actually a really big deal uh, in terms of being able to use APIs. This would have had a dramatic impact on open source and sharing uh, if, if uh, it had gone the other way. But the Supreme Court ruled that the way that Google used those APIs, uh, or that basically they ruled that using APIs in general, not the implementation, but the APIs, is fair use. And so that was a big deal. Okay. Okay, how many instances of Linux are there now, right now, in outer space? Is it less than 100 or more than 100? Uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> what happened? Okay. Yeah. Uh, the people who said more than 100... That's a good answer. It's actually 106,000. <laughs> so that's a, it's a little bit more than 100. And the reason for that is SpaceX, with their crazy Starlink constellation of satellites, there's 66 instances of Linux in every Starlink satellite. Uh, they do all this stuff with redundancy. Uh, instead of using radiation-hardened processors, they're using redundancy in voting, and that's how they're doing the fault tolerant and stuff. So it's actually pretty impressive. Um, they've got, uh, at, when I checked this, which was a, like a couple days ago, it was 1607 working satellites right now. But then there's, you know, then there's the Linux a couple places on Mars, and there's some CubeSats that were on Mars, and it's on the International Space Station. There's a little robot that runs Debian on the International Space Station. So a couple of other places as well. Um, let's see. Okay, speaking of space, the Space Needle is... Uh, either green, the name of a hypothetical space elevator project by NASA, uh, red, an observation tower in Seattle, Washington, or is it both? <laughs> okay. Okay, and the answer is... It's only the tower. Sorry, if you held up two cards, you need to sit down. <laughs> uh, so NASA did, has studied space elevators. You would think that that's a sci-fi concept that's too far out there for them to have even looked at. But they did. They studied it, uh, I think it was way back in 2003. Uh, but the name they gave it was Space Elevator. <laughs> they didn't call it Space Needle or you know, anything really kind of cool. Uh, or Skynet. That would have been a good... Uh, Okay, well, speaking of the Space Needle, is it less than 50 years old or more than 50 years old? <laughs> okay. I'm wait, just waiting a little bit more for online people. Oh, and I should probably, okay. Okay, we've got a lot of people answered here. It's more than 50 years old. Uh, I, I would have pegged it at 72 myself, uh, but uh, when I, in the early 70s, when I was just 10 years old, I won't tell you which year that was, but uh, uh, I went to the Space Needle. It was really cool. Uh, when it was built, it was the tallest structure west of the Mississippi. So I don't know. Did I fool anyone with that one? I don't know. Not very many. We got five still in at, at, at home. Oh, okay. Yeah, this will knock some people out. Okay. <laughs> okay, scientists recently demonstrated two ways to create truly random numbers. 
uh, extremely quickly. So we all know that random numbers, truly random numbers, are very important for cryptography and stuff. And both of these methods used a laser. So these, these are both real solutions, but one was much faster than the other. Was green a laser reflecting with itself in a special microcavity? Or red, a laser a interacting with the quantum vacuum state? <laughs> so who's up on their uh, laser uh, random number generators? <laughs> the fact that they have devices that interact with the quantum vacuum state is, just blows my mind. Uh, it is just unbelievable. Um, <laughs> I don't know, is it? Uh, it <laughs> okay, how are we doing? If you are green, stay up. So, oh, we're down to we're down to two. Two in the room, and let me see how many at home. Four at home. Okay, what do you guys think? Should I do one more round, or is that cruel? That would give us six. Okay, let's declare winners. Oh, except you've won before. <laughs> okay, so these are the winners online, and uh, oh, go take his picture of his badge again. We'll we'll figure out something. I don't know. I'll, I it records to a file. We'll. We'll do. We'll we'll deduplicate this. Okay, okay. Let's go one more time. I think we have time for one more round here. Okay. Oh, this is huge news. People have been waiting for this for so long. Preempt RT. This was just announced at Plumbers. Was Preempt RT? Has it finally been merged, fully merged into the mainline mainstream Linux kernel? <laughs> uh, this is this is trickier than it looks. Well, actually, it's not that tricky because everybody knows there's always stuff left. <laughs> it was it and the, so oh, what is it? Notice the uh, uh, notice the uh, that source. The title of the article I got this from is Linux Central Real Time Patches. Integrated after 17 years, and then they went on to describe the situation, which is it's really close, but it's still a couple, there's still some stuff outstanding. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, it's also not merged because you can't turn it on. <laughs> so anyway, okay. Next question. Okay, print K. We had a print K change in 515, which is, uh, that doesn't happen very often. So uh, what does the new print K do? What, what, what does it support? Automatically translating messages into other languages besides English, or getting a list of all print K messages in the whole kernel? Okay, <laughs> I see how it goes. <laughs> I don't, let's see if I fooled anybody at home. No, very few people at home, too. Uh, so this is, this is actually a pretty neat feature if you're doing a lot. There's a lot of uh, administration suites that do regular expression matching on messages to detect problems. And so having a definitive list of all the messages is super handy. Um, and well, especially you can note when things change. If, you, if the message you've got a regular expression for disappears, then you need to go fix your ad administration thing. <laughs> well, that's a good point. <laughs> okay, the comment, the comment, in case you couldn't hear that, is if you're the person not winning, you probably should win the uh, LWN.net uh, article. Uh, yeah, because I, like, I, I totally crib most of this stuff off LWN.net. Uh, okay, w, dash W error is a new feature in the Linux kernel, 515. Uh, and is this green? Any compiler warning is converted into an error that halts the build. Or is this red? Certain errors can be converted into warnings, so they don't halt the build.
<laughs> Aha. Okay. And uh, this is actually the top one. So, or the green one. Any compiler warning is converted into an error. So that means uh, warnings. This the great thing about this is that more and more builds are going to have be warning free. So you won't see all this noise and junk when you're building. And so eventually we'll get to a point where, like, when a warning when a warning pops up, someone will actually look at it and pay attention. <laughs> That's the goal here. Uh, okay. How many private, all non-professional missions to outer space have there been ever in the history of, of the world? Is it one, two, or three? How many private, all non-professional missions to outer space have there been? Uh, that's a good question. The Carmen line is 100K. Uh, I, uh, but the U.S. says it's 80K. I'm not going to comment on what line this uses. <laughs> and I'll explain why I don't have to comment. Uh, let's see here. It's actually two. The Virgin Galactic flight, besides not going to 100K, also had a professional pilot. <laughs> Uh, to outer space. Uh, when I went up the balloon. Oh, yeah. Well, the game's not fair, is it? Did he make it to? Did he make it to? Did he make it to 80k though? No, like 100,000 feet. I don't think a balloon's ever been to 80k. Well, I don't know. Oh yeah, was it? Well, I don't know. I'm 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 giving it to SpaceX and and Blue Origin. I'm sorry. <laughs> So, um, okay, how we do? You again. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go one more question. Oh, do it again? Okay, here we go. Oh, that's good. Oh, let's see. Can you divine my password from my typing? <laughs> 128K miles? Okay, this last one is kind of fun. During the landing sequence for the Inspiration4 mission, that was the SpaceX mission we just had a couple of uh, weeks ago, one of the crew members is shown watching what in-flight movie? <laughs> when you go into outer space, you can watch an in-flight movie. Was it Star Wars, Alien, or Spaceballs? And the answer is Spaceballs. It was, I, I thought I was going to die laughing. I was watching the landing thing, and they actually showed him. He's just sitting there, you know, astronaut watching space balls. Uh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> um, okay, so let's see. Uh, let's go ahead and declare winners. I'm not sure what we're going to do with you. We'll get you some number of, ex of prizes. <laughs> but we have two at home, A3F and KK Reet. Okay, should we should we call it there? How many are we at? How many total winners? Okay, let's. It's five thirty. We better we better move to the next game. And the next game is rock paper scissors. So everybody stand up. We'll do this. We'll do one round of this. Oh, no, it's not rock, paper, scissors, lizard, Spock, <laughs> which we have done in the past, but it's too complicated. Um, OK, so the way this game works, of course, is standard rock, paper, scissors. If you've never played before, just, just hold your hand up. <laughs> so you hold your hand up in either a rock, a paper, or scissors. And you have to beat what's in the presentation. These are hard coded in the presentation. Um, and if you do, you get to stay in. That means that two-thirds, so a tie does not allow you to stay in. So two-thirds of you will get eliminated every round. It's brutal and fast, just like, just like we like our games. OK, so I'm going to say one, two, three, throw. And 
Uh, and this time you can't crib because nobody knows the answers. So if you watch someone else, it doesn't help you. So one, two, three, throw. OK. The answer was that the host threw scissors. So if you are rock, stay, at, stay in the game. All right. And let's go to the next round. OK, so you who are still in the game, how do we get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight? OK. Um, oh, people are, th people are throwing their, their answers at home. That's good. Um, wait for just a sec. Show result. No. Nope. Is it going to work? Oh, that would be classic if it fell over right now. Oh, there we go. OK, the host threw. Oh, I. <laughs> OK, just stay standing. <laughs> I forgot to have you throw your answer. OK, it's too late to throw it now. Uh, how many people do we, we? We wiped out the people at home, though. <laughs> so there's an advantage to being in the room. You can capitalize on host mistakes. OK, let's, this time, let me have you actually throw your answer. Uh, one, two, three, throw. OK. A lot of scissors and rocks. I got There's a delay. I think it might be because of the, the streaming delay. So it takes a while for people to, to register. So I threw paper, so if you're scissors, stay standing. OK, we're going to do this one more time. I'm sorry you who are still up, because this is. OK, so uh, and at home, uh, they should be seeing the next question. And they're, they're still in. OK. Um, one, two, three, throw. OK. Is it good? At least one of you is, is out, but we'll see how many. Oh, we're waiting for people at home. Rock. So uh, paper is the only winner right there. And let's declare winners. And we had Paolo, 21, at home, and uh, this gentleman here. All right. Yeah, so Jillian, can you get his uh, info? Yeah. No, no, no. no we got to stop because we're out of time. So. OK, so now. Uh, that is the end of the game. I hope, you, I hope you guys had a good time. We have more questions. Some of them were funny. Yeah, we'll see. Um, let's see, how do I get out of here? Oops. OK. So, so these are just my closing thoughts here. So it's, it's, been, a rough, it's been a rough 18 months. Uh, we've talked, you know, in June, I really had high hopes. I had what I call peak hope that we we're nearing the end of the pandemic. The numbers were looking good. People were getting vaccinated. Uh, and then the Delta variant came out. And uh, it's, been, it's been challenging. Um, and not just, not just COVID-19, but there seems to be a lot of disagreement in the world, uh, a lot of people bickering, uh, and a lot of, lot of hard feelings between people. Uh, and the really sad thing is, on, on my presentation last year, I had these exact same two bullet points. COVID's going longer than expected, and uh, lots of disagreement. Um, but uh, it, it's easy to succumb to negative thoughts. Uh, but there are awesome things happening in the world. Um, some of the things that I found inspiring this year uh, probably didn't realize it. This is the type of news that gets buried in the press. But polio was actually officially eradicated from the continent of Africa. That is awesome. So, yeah. The Inspiration4 mission to space. 
Uh, a lot of people are calling it just, you know, a billionaire tourist ride. But it raised money for a good cause. It raised over $210 million uh, for children's cancer research and patient treatment. We landed a rover and flew a helicopter on Mars running Linux. That's pretty awesome. Uh, companies around the world uh, are making uh, great strides in waste reduction. Uh, healthcare workers around the world made significant sacrifices uh, to help those affected by COVID-19. A lot of people made heroic efforts in the last uh, couple of years. And um, some people, I just want to point out, are able to, um, are able to stay really positive in the face of extreme adversity. And so one person I want to talk about is Haley Arsenault. So when she was 10 years old, she was diagnosed with bone cancer. And, and then she overcame it, had a really good attitude about it. And she was selected by St. Jude's. So St. Jude's, who was the benefactor of the Inspiration4 mission, got to select someone to go on that trip. And uh, she just had a really good attitude. There were some things in training that were very, very difficult for her. She has a prosthesis because of her bone cancer, uh, but she just had the greatest attitude. And every time, I swear, every time they would cut to the, the capsule, she was always floating upside down. You know, it's like just having a great time and uh, just really inspiring. Everybody on the flight, I thought, was inspiring, had an ins inspiring story, uh, but her especially. And if you look at, uh, it, it made me think, what, may, what is it that makes people positive? Um, you know, she had all these things that she overcame, but she was positive before they selected her for the mission. They, pro they selected her for the mission because she was a positive person. She was a, uh, a, um, had a really positive outlook on life. And uh, she did a lot of things to support a cause that she believes in. She, she drove herself really hard to be able to accomplish that. And there's a documentary on Netflix. If you haven't seen it, I recommend watching it. It's, it's, it's pretty inspiring. And the question that I thought watching her was, where does that come from? And the, the interesting thing, I think, is it probably became from her cancer. Okay, when you think about it, adversity can, can some people it breaks, but some people it, it changes for the better. And um, we don't go out and we seek adversity. Uh, no one you know, two years ago would have said, oh, you know, it'll be a great thing if we have a pandemic. But, you know, and it's been, a, it's not a bad thing. I'm not saying a pandemic is a good thing. But, uh, but you can take adversity and you can channel it and, and be positive after it. Uh, so don't let adversity and negativity and cynicism wear you down. There's always an opportunity to go out and do something positive in the world. One of the things, I mean, you can volunteer, you can donate to a good cause. Uh, you can work on open source. Open source software is one of the things that we as a community contribute to the world. Uh, we give of our time and our talent uh, to make the world a better place. And go be kind. So let's build a great and hopeful future together. I hope, I, I think the future is brighter than it's ever been. Uh, it's been a rough couple of years, but you know, we're coming out of it. And this conference is just a little tiny glimmer of you know, our ability to get back together and enjoy each other's company and, and, and learn and grow. So I thank you for coming to ELC this year. You are the ones in the room uh, are the stalwart brave ones. Uh, I, hope, I hope everyone, both here and online, was able to learn something. The videos are going to be online, so there's continued opportunities for learning. And I hope that uh, I can see you in person next year. So thank you very much.